A good waist-hip ratio makes you look fit, healthy, and appealing. Many men know that wider shoulders and a narrower waist make you look more masculine, but few know that your waist-hip ratio should be under 0.95 to have optimal masculine proportions and reduce the risk of chronic diseases. Small glutes with a large waist can indicate a higher risk for high blood pressure, heart disease, and diabetes. Your glutes and hips are heavily influenced by your training program, routines, and technique, while your waist is largely determined by diet. I'll show you 5 ways to quickly turn a sagging pancake butt into firm, round glutes. First, I observe many folks spending too much time on glute isolating exercises like kickbacks, loop machines, cable hip extensions, and hip thrusts. Some of these workouts are useful, but squats and deadlifts are better. First, work out with big squats and Romanian deadlifts. Starting each leg workout with 3 to 4 hard sets of one of these two movements is recommended. Avoiding these two more difficult exercises and replacing them with glute kickbacks or cable hip extensions will not yield the same results as barbell squats and Romanian deadlifts. Bulgarian split squats, walking lunges, and step-ups are also great glute exercises, so add these in your leg day after 3-4 to four sets of hard squats or deadlifts. If you want prettier glutes quickly, start with and focus on squats and deadlifts. By the way, if you're not sure how to do these exercises properly, I'll show you later in this video. Step 2 is to develop stronger at these workouts over time. This is vital, yet most gym goers skip it. They use their body weight or the same weight load week after week for squats and are disappointed by the lack of results. Your glutes will only expand if challenged, like other muscles. Continuously increasing weight is one of the finest and most reliable strategies to ensure you're challenging yourself and overloading over time. This strategy may seem easy and repetitious, yet it's great for strengthening practically any workout. 6 to 10 reps is my favorite rep range for squats, where failure is perilous. Assume you can execute 10 full reps of 135 pound squats. Increase the weight by 5 pounds on each side and aim for 10 reps. When you increase the weight, you may only be able to do 8 reps instead of 10. Nothing wrong with that. Goal, use that heavier weight week after week until you can do 10 repetitions on your first set. After that, rinse, cleanse, and repeat until you're lifting much more weight. You may increase the weight one week and be able to accomplish 10 reps because you've gotten stronger. That means you should increase the weight until you're no longer at the top of your rep range, then gradually return to 10 reps. Next, do this twice a week. At least two leg-specific workout days each week will provide your glutes increased training volume. By week's end, a higher overall training volume, sets times reps times intensity, leads to muscular growth. You'll do more sets and reps if you train your glutes and legs twice a week instead of one. Probably twice the laborer training. Studies demonstrate that natural lifters' muscle protein synthesis only increases for 48 to 72 hours following an exercise. Because muscle protein synthesis promotes muscular growth, repair, and adaptability, we must maximize it. We want these things, because muscle protein synthesis creates new proteins in muscle fibers, which can boost muscle growth, strength, and development. Muscular cells receive signaling channels to promote muscular protein synthesis. One major route is mTOR. As we know, weightlifting is a significant activator of the mTOR pathway, which increases muscle protein synthesis. We recommend training legs every 3 to 4 days to maximize muscle protein synthesis throughout the week. That'll maximize results quickly. Step 4, food optimization, is intimately related to muscle protein synthesis. To increase your waist-hip ratio, you need to eat the correct meals to reduce body fat but to grow rounder, firmer gluteal muscles, you need adequate vital amino acids. Without amino acids, muscle protein synthesis fails. Simply said, amino acids are assembled into new muscle proteins. Proteins are made from amino acids, which are digested from chicken, beef, turkey, fish, seitan, and tofu. Food provides essential amino acids, which stimulate muscle protein synthesis and cannot be synthesized by the body you must consume adequate protein daily. You've undoubtedly heard this station recommend 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight every day. 
Studies also suggest that eating protein within hours of a workout can boost muscle protein synthesis. This delivers amino acids to muscle cells. Their protein synthesis friendly state. Recovery and consistency are the final steps before we discuss how to perform squats and deadlifts for best results. There are three key recovery tips. First, give yourself at least 48 hours between your two strong leg training days, ideally 72. The second problem is that too much lower body cardio during recovery will hinder recuperation, strength improvements, and muscular building. Running, stair climbing, and ellipticals are lower body cardio. The third thing you should do to maximize recuperation is sleep 7 to 9 hours a night. It takes time to change your body, so make the actions I've listed routines you follow every day, week, and month. If you stay consistent, you'll see a huge change quickly. Putting a bench behind you is a great method to start barbell squatting and perfect the form. Unrack the barbell, walk back to the bench, turn your feet outward, and focus on sitting back instead of squatting. Imagine sitting in a chair, then push your hips back and lower them while bending your knees and maintaining your chest up. Squats should be done with your knees in line with the middle of your foot and your weight over your feet, not on your toes or heels. Moving on to my second main exercise suggestion. Romanian deadlifts target your glutes better than ordinary deadlifts. Start by placing your shins near the bar and your feet slightly wider than hip width apart. Your knees should bend slightly with each rep, but your hips should be the main focus. To maintain a neutral spine arch, hinge your hips behind you, slightly bend your knees, and keep your chest up. Hold the barbell slightly wider than your shins and squeeze your shoulder blades. Hold a deep breath and lift the weight by thrusting your hips forward and standing upright. Instead of rising with your lower back, clench your abs, retract your shoulders, and drive your hips forward. At the top, exhale, take a deep breath, and decrease to repeat reps. Guys, that concludes it. I hope this video helped you prioritize and simplify the most crucial glute transformation exercises. Please subscribe to this channel if you like this video.